Tide radar at 11 o'clock is all clear. We'll stay this way throughout the night tonight. As always, you get your forecast first here on News 13. Falling into the 60s here around midnight, then waking up tomorrow morning. Very cool temperatures in the upper 50s inland, low 60s for the beaches. I'll turn off this warm and sunny weather sticks around all the way through your Father's Day. Coming up with my full forecast. News 13 at 11 starts right now. And right now in News 13's coverage, you can count on a runoff for the 7th Congressional District's Democratic nomination is still possible. Tonight, find out why a judge has a state election commission decision on hold. Police make an arrest in a shooting that sent a man and one of his suspect robber, suspected robbers to the hospital. We'll tell you what happened. And if you have an idea for a smartphone app, you'll see who could help turn that idea into profit. Live from the WBTW News Center, this is News 13 at 11. Coverage you can count on. And a good Friday evening to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bob Chubak. And I'm Amy Vetrano. Wendy Redman is off. Tonight's coverage you can count on begins with an apparent win in the 7th Congressional District Democratic primary. This afternoon, the State Elections Commission stuck to its guns and ruled that votes cast Tuesday for Ted Vick do not count. The official election commission numbers now show Dr. Gloria Bromel Tanubu picked up 52% of the vote and avoided a runoff with Preston Britton. That's an outright win. Again, though, that is if you do not count votes cast for Vic. Vic dropped out of the race after a DUI arrest. The South Carolina Elections Commission certified the elections of the June 12th primary, and in doing so, it certified that I, having garnered the majority of the votes, and the Democratic nominee for the 7th Congressional District. Yeah! Since 6th, though, Preston Britton's campaign manager released the following statement. It says, quote, it is disappointing that the State Election Commission determined that more than 2,300 voters have been told that their vote does not count against the recommendation of the State Attorney General. We believe that the court will ultimately decide that the votes cast will be counted. Preston looks forward for a swift resolution of this matter for the benefit of all affected by the South Carolina Election Commission decision, unquote. Those in favor of a runoff also argue there was no notification before the primary that votes for Vic would not count. And as the Britain campaign said, this is not the end of the ballot controversy. An Horry County judge today issued a restraining order against the election commission saying Vic's votes should count. A hearing is set for June 21st and remember the runoff date is June 26th. On the Republican side of the ticket, it's Andre Bauer against Tom Rice in a runoff, and that is also on the 26th. For the first time in 10 months, South Carolina's jobless rate rises. The state's rate rose last month to 9.1%, up 8 from 8.8 .8 in April. That's sixth worth, worst in the nation. North Carolina's unemployment was unchanged at 9.4%, fourth worst in the nation. The nation's, the national rate is 8.2%. Back to South Carolina, Marion County has the state's worst rate at 17.1%. The local counties with the best rates of Florence and Ori, both at 9.9% and Georgetown at 9.5%. And at 7.3%, Lexington County had the best rate in South Carolina. Florence City Council passed its 2013 budget this week and that could mean some big changes for downtown residents. Council agreed to set aside $360,000 to buy unoccupied property on Chase and Barnes streets as well as Irby and Darlington streets. City officials did not release any plans for the site but say to expect improvements. We could get rid of some of these abandoned houses or either not if you know, if the city would fix it up and then sell it, because people, that would give people more pride in their community, you know, and then um, make the neighborhood just look good. Council also approved a 2% pay raise for city employees to go into effect in January. A new hospital patient safety score reveals good grades for most local facilities. The latest ratings from the Leapfrog Group gives A grades to Grand Strand Regional in Myrtle Beach, McLeod Regional Medical Center in Florence and Carolina Pines in Hartsville. B grades go to Conway Medical Center as well as Georgetown Memorial Hospital and Waccamaw Community Hospitals in Myrtle's Inlet. The group gave a C to Carolina hospital system in Florence. Leapfrog bases its scores on 26 criteria, including patient injury, medical errors, and infections. You'll find a link to more information on each hospital at scnow.com. On the crime tracker tonight, Florence police make an arrest in a shooting at an apartment complex. Authorities charged this man, Demetrius Sparks, he's 19, with, among other things, attempted murder and armed robbery. 
That robbery and shooting happened yesterday afternoon at the Mount Zion Apartments on South Church Street. Police say three people pulled guns and tried to rob a man, but then a fight started. Shots went off and the shots hit the victim and also sparks. The search for the other robbers continues. Darlington police arrested and charged this man and two juveniles with armed robbery. Investigators say that Benny Bryant and the others called for a taxi and then pulled guns and demanded money from the cabbie. The driver, though, got away and called police. North Carolina State Troopers searched for a hit and run driver who sent a man on a road crew to the hospital. That happened Tuesday on I-74 in Robinson County. Troopers say that a tractor trailer sped through a construction zone, hit a highway barrel, and then the barrel hit the worker. That worker, 18-year-old Alan Braswell out of Greer, South Carolina, up near Greenville, he suffered several broken bones and organ damage. A new South Carolina-based company started a project today that could make you some money. That's right. If you have an idea that you think would make a great smartphone or tablet app, News 13's Capital reporter Robert Kittle shows you new at 11, the company that could help make your idea a reality as we cover the Carolinas. Curtis Ford teaches Russian at USC and he's had several ideas for apps or applications for iPhones and iPads that would help students learn Russian. But he didn't know what to do with them until now. He's pitching his ideas at something called App Idea Day at a new company called 52 Apps in Columbia. It was created by college students Christopher Tebow and Brendan Lee, who've been writing apps for years. The best ideas seem to come from outside of our field of expertise. You run out of technology ideas pretty quickly. And so by talking to everyone else in the community, we can come up with ideas that we never would have dreamed of. They heard 30 to 40 ideas, most of which they say were pretty good. This was the first Idea Day, but they plan to have a lot more. They named the company 52 Apps because they plan to put out one app every week. They came up with a way to reuse the parts of computer code that are the same for all apps so they can focus on the new areas and speed up the development process. If they create an app, the person who came up with the idea gets a royalty of 5% on the first 10,000 downloads and 10% after that. So basically, we'll handle the entire development of your app and then you'll just get a royalty stream. That sounds pretty good to the people who came in for App Idea Day. This is a really exciting opportunity, I think, because uh, there are a lot of us who are teaching languages who do have a good idea, but who don't have the technical skills, the technical background to put something like this together. Apple says more than 25 billion apps have been downloaded. If you've ever seen Angry Birds, they've had millions of downloads and it was successful. Now, not saying everyone's going to be the next Angry Birds, but the opportunity is certainly there if the idea is good enough. In Columbia, Robert Kittle, News 13. Those apps will sell for 99 cents up to $5 per download. The company will announce future app idea days on its website. You'll find a link to 52 apps at scnow.com. Well, future law enforcement officers receive special training to handle underage drinking. Well, you haven't been been drinking at all? How old are you? These are real underage students, but the bust is staged. It's an exercise to help investigators and the police academy know what to expect if they have to shut down a real party. Officers learn how to detect alcohol, drugs, and fake IDs. Uh, in, in years past, the typical way to break up an underage drinking party is pull up, turn on your lights and siren, and watch the kids scatter. Uh, so those days are gone. We, you know, undermanned, um, but it's still an unsafe practice. So what? Uh, this training is designed to do is show how officers how to contain these parties. Parents are not off the hook in these situations. If there is underage drinking at your home, you could face charges of contributing to a delinquency of a minor. A conviction can carry hefty fines and up to three years in jail. Mitt Romney zeroes in on middle class voters in small towns. Next on News 13, see how he kicked off his latest campaign effort. And you'll see why undocumented students all over the country gather to celebrate the government's new immigration policy. Andrew? And after a cool start to your Friday, we warmed up nicely this afternoon, officially a high of 82 degrees in Florence, quite a bit below average after starting out the day at 64 and certainly much better than our record high of 104 degrees. In North Myrtle Beach, we were a little bit warmer today, made it up to about 83 degrees officially, and those temperatures down to 62 in the morning will be even cooler waking up tomorrow morning. I'll have a look at those morning lows coming up in my full forecast.